Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a monochromatic vintage style effect in Lightroom. We post new videos and resources every week, so make sure you subscribe and follow us on social media. Also check out newlayer.com and sign up for the email list to get special offers that are only available for email subscribers. Let's get started. So here's the before image and here's the after, and I'm going to take you through my workflow and the order that I do things to create this look. New Layer members can download this raw image in the project files at newlayer.com, but you can also apply this effect to any image you have. So we'll open up the before image and I'm going to hide these thumbnails. And the first thing that we're going to do is make a basic exposure correction. So I'm going to come over to the exposure slider and bring that down just a little bit. Now I almost always like to decrease the highlights and increase the shadows in my photos to increase the overall dynamic range. We want as much information in our image to start with as possible before we start any real processing. So I'm going to come down to my highlight slider and bring that down a bit, maybe negative 50. And I'm going to increase the shadows to about 75. And every image is different, but for this look we want it to be kind of faded out. So I'm increasing the shadows a little more than I normally would. If you come up to the histogram, you can see that most of the image information is towards the middle or towards the right side. And what I want to do is increase the overall contrast in the image to fill that histogram. That way we have the most information possible before we start taking things away. So I'm going to come down and increase the whites. And there's nothing that's actually really white in the image, otherwise I'd take that so the histogram touches the right side. But for now, I'm going to take it to about 50. And then same with the blacks. The only black thing in this image is really the door of the barn. So I don't need to take the histogram all the way down till it's touching the side. So I'm going to take the blacks down to about 40. Next, I'll warm everything up simply by increasing the temperature slider to about 6,000. Maybe a little bit more. And then I'll add some contrast and clarity using the texture and the clarity slider. So I'll increase the texture just a little bit to about 30 and the clarity to about 25. So already if we look at the before and the after, it's already looking a little older and more stylized. Next I'm going to go into my tone curve panel and I'm going to add an S curve here. And what that's going to do is bring up some of the black colors and bring down some of the white colors to give our image a faded film type look. So I'm going to add a point here and another one here. That way when I change the right point and the left one, all of this stuff in the middle remains unchanged. So I'm going to bring up this left point, and that's going to increase the brightness of my blacks. And I'm going to bring this right point down, and that's going to decrease the brightness of the whites. So you can see how that adds a little bit of a faded look. Next I'll go into the split toning panel. And normally you want the highlights and shadows in split toning to be opposite colors, but for this image, we're going for a more monochromatic look. So first I'll increase the saturation of the highlights to 100. That way we can see what color we're working with. And I'll start increasing the hue until I get a color that I like in the highlights. So I like this color. It's a little bit orange with a little bit of green and I think that's going to suit this image well. Then I'll decrease the saturation until it's not so strong. So I'm going to set that to about 25. Next I'll come down to the shadows and increase the saturation again. And then I'll start shifting the hue until I see the color that I like. So for the shadows, about 40 looks good. And then I'll bring the saturation down to about 65. Next I'll come down into the calibration panel. And most people never bother with this panel, but it's a good way to shift colors around and add kind of an ethereal look to your photos. So the hue slider under the red primary shifts the colors that are in the red channel towards magenta or orange. The green primary hue slider shifts the green channel more towards yellow or blue. And the blue primary slider shifts the blue channel towards cyan or purple. So you can see if I drag the red primary hue slider to the left, that some of the red colors and the overall image gets a little magenta cast to it. And if I go all the way to the other side, it's a lot more orange. So I'm going to kind of split the difference towards orange and go with about 50. If I move the green primary hue slider all the way to the left, it adds a whole lot of orange. And if I go all the way to the right, it brings back some of the blue color in the sky. I want the sky to retain a little bit of that blue color, so I'm going to go 
with about 25. Lastly, with the blue primary slider, if I take it all the way to the right, the image becomes very green, and that's kind of the opposite effect we're going for. So I'm gonna go the other way, and about negative 50 looks pretty good. It adds some red and some orange into our image. The last thing that I'm gonna do, because this image looks a little too saturated for an aged look, I'm gonna come back into my basic panel, and I'm gonna decrease the saturation a bit. I'm gonna take that all the way down to about negative 55, because we added a lot of our own colors in the split toning panel. So again, here's the before and the after. That's it for now guys. If you liked the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe. Also, leave a comment letting me know what you wanna learn next. We create new content based on your feedback, so it's really helpful. I'm JT Shaver for New Layer. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.